All right, hello everybody. Welcome back for another breakdown. Today we are talking about layers. Again, I think this is the last Super Bowl commercial that we look at. This is Pringles. Uh, just a beautiful looking ad. Very, very good color. Nice art direction, nice wardrobe. The cinematography is fantastic. All of the elements of the framework are in every single shot here. Just beautiful looking stuff. I mean, look at the colors. Uh, I don't know, I, I would imagine. I'm not gonna say who I think colored it, but I, I have strong ideas about the company. And it's just a beautiful looking ad. If you don't like this kind of cinematography, uh, you should not be following this channel because this is the kind of stuff, when I'm talking good stuff, this is the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. So let's jump into the layers bit, right? Because we could break down every single aspect of this commercial and it would fall in line with everything else we've done on the channel in terms of lighting, in terms of composition, shape, all those things. But really what we wanna focus on here is layers. And let's start by going here, okay. Basically, it's a cheat, a little cheat code. Anytime you're location scouting, anytime you're uh, trying to decide whether or not a location is gonna work for your action and how you can easily cheat depth into a shot and make it feel significantly less boring. Uh, you know, we often talk about the L of the room, right? Just having a join, if you're in an interior, having a join in the walls inside of the shot helps you because then you have those two different angles where light will play completely different off of them. Even if you're in the visual effects world like this, right? I can't imagine this is real. I have to imagine that all of this is fake above these people. But if this was a real location, this is exactly how you would play it because you want the varying contrast between this wall and that wall. Then layers, always be thinking, the more layers that you can fit in a shot, the harder it's going to be for the person to pick out where you want them to look if you don't light it properly. But if you light it properly and you tell them exactly where to look with what the hottest things in the image are, and then you salt and pepper things in all over the place, the, the last step is those layers. The more that you add, the more complex it feels, the more richness there is to an image. And right? if it was just, if you just had a wide shot without any of this business here, without any of this stuff here, with these reflections in the glass, it starts to get really, really boring and flat. And I know sometimes it can be hard to think in boring and flat terms when we only really look at the best commercials out there, which are gonna be done by really fantastic cinematographers that won't leave things flat. Uh, you just have to imagine that if you remove all that stuff, it's boring. And that's probably why your stuff looks boring because you're not adding as many layers as possible because these things take time. As long as you're building it into the set though, as long as you're building into the discussion early on, whether that's in pre-production, it's on any of the scouting periods where you're always thinking to yourself, how can I fit more stuff in? Especially if you're a working cinematographer and you're working on jobs with a proper production designer or art department, just like they are your best friends of like, hey, can we get more stuff in here? If this wall doesn't exist, right, at this location, can we just get two pieces of glass with some wood on the side so that I can use them in the shot, so I can just randomly put them there. We never see this location, right? We're never looking this way inside this room. So who cares if it's not really there? We'll just make it there. And we keep going and then this one is the real great example, right? So we go, again, don't really wanna harp on the light because we've talked about it in so many different videos lately, but framework for the light, this is basically the credit card shot, just put Pringles in instead. And we bump out a little bit. Same, you can see why it's beautiful, right? Little edge light lighting from the window that you can't actually see, but then we get to not, still not there, still not there, dancing. Yes, this one, <laughs> these guys having a good time. I mean, this is a good looking ad, right? I like the little accents of color up here, but all of these people in the foreground, all of these little things to shoot through, always better to have lots of extras on set, right? Because we're basically, what are we doing? We're creating a funnel for people to look. We want people to look at the dancing guy and these beautiful colored, uh, guys with mustaches down here, right? That's where we want them to look. I also like the reflections that are happening up here. And notice the levels of the sky versus what's coming in. We got all this level coming in here, all this level hitting the Pringles, all the level hitting there. So you can have the actual elements of layers, but then if you don't use the light on top of it to tell people exactly where to look, it can get confusing. You know, for example, just imagine you had the same level that is hitting this guy. Here are sort of key level and this stuff down here. Imagine if we placed another light out here and hit this guy with that level. Well, now you have this big blob of distracting highlight in the foreground. We wanna lead people exactly where we want them to look. So that is the whole point of the layers. It's not just to have more stuff in front of where we want people to look, but it's actually, we're gonna use it as a guide, right? You don't just throw them in there. You're like, oh yeah, look, there's layers. And then all of a sudden, you know, you got half of the frame as some dude uh, who has nothing to do with the project. You wanna use them to your advantage. And the way that you do that is, okay, all the same stuff as the framework normally, and this layer thing, why you find it in such great cinematography is normally it's one of the very last steps. So you got to take off all the other things that we normally talk about in order to take advantage of it. Because if you start with the layers 
and you don't do any of the other stuff, it's not going to look great. If you start with upstage lighting and don't do the layer stuff, well, you've, you've, you're already 80% of the way there. So it really is important the order that you tackle the issues, not the order on the day that you tackle the issues, but where you place the most importance. So I wouldn't put layers at number one on the list. But as you get really good at the other four or five elements, layers just thickens up the whole thing. You know, I often talk about the one or 2% things that you do. Well, it's just layers is that 5% little bonus at the end. And if you do that on every single thing, that's when they all come together and this project looks twice as good as whatever you're doing because it's not just one thing. It's all those little things done really, really well. And then right at the end, we sprinkle on the extra stuff because we have the time, because we have the experience, or the cinematographer does, of being on set and controlling when this happens, when that happens, what I should be focused on now. And then finally, those last seven minutes of lighting, okay, this is how we're going to take full advantage of everything that we've built. So just a quick look at this Pringles ad, uh, really well done. And that'll do it for this episode, right? Layers. If you do it, it will be nice, right? It's like... Uh, What's that movie with Kevin Costner? Field of Dreams. This is Image of Dreams. If you do it, it will be nice. Okay, that's going to do it for this one. We will see you in the next one. Goodbye.